Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. <laughs> And anything else that comes in between in one minute I'd like you to pray just pray in the spirit for one minute and then I begin to charge our hearts this is koinonia It's a realm of your glory, it's a realm of your grace. I can see a mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy. Shabbat shalom. You're not wasting your time tonight. Ta -da -da. Ta -da -da. Ta -da -da. That as you seek men, O God, we are available in truth. We are available in deed. Moving past the gates of religion, moving past the gates of religiosity, into a real encounter with the Spirit. Shalada bakata fraska debele geto shabrande gem kalish kada braske veneke parados kadia dabalados shabrande gebele geta pas kadia dabalados ya taba shade brenge debele kepa. Please just press for one minute. I just felt stirred in my heart as I raised this song that the Lord would have us press in the spirit. There is a making that is happening in our lives tonight. Nina Kawa we are bo Sarkin Salama Nina Kawa go dia Sarkin Salama Sarkin Salama
please don't be tired dear apostle this is a price for power and grace with god We'll raise your banner up We'll shine your light so bright We'll sing in honor of you We'll raise your banner high We'll shine your light so bright We'll sing in honor of you Yes, Lord. Let the maker make Shale Shamas Kadiata. Let the refiner refine. Let the builder build. Let the maker make. Let the refiner refine. Let the builder build. Let the maker make. Let the refiner refine. In Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus mighty name we pray please sit down just help those under the anointing there will be many impartations as I teach you notice what God has been doing these weeks be sensitive to what God is doing I want you to listen please the greatest tool for the revival that is coming upon Nigeria, Africa, and the globe, the greatest tool for this revival that is coming, that we claim will be greater than the world's revival, that we claim will be greater than the Azusa Street revival, that we claim will be greater than the revival of the 60s, the 70s, and even the 80s the greatest tool for the coming revival will not be anointing listen carefully surprisingly the greatest tool you will need for the revival coming will not be anointing the greatest tool for the revival that is coming will not be financial prosperity these things are important and they have their place the greatest tool for the revival that is coming will not even be skill and talent please make sure you listen carefully that this revival that has been prophesied by fathers and veterans of the gospel and prophetically from scripture that it will happen as it were in the days of Noah it will not just be based on who is anointed uh -uh. It will take more than anointing to host, sustain, and be able to deliver the move of God that is coming. The revival that is coming will need more than financial prosperity. The revival that is coming will need more than skill and talent. In fact, the revival that is coming will need more than influence. As powerful as these aforementioned are there are many people today who believe that they are prepared for a move of God just because there is the anointing congratulations but I hate to be the bearer of bad news the revivals that failed also had anointing 
there was no mention of the absence of the anointing in the revivals that failed there is no mention in fact many revivals that happened brought in economic you know empowerment to the citizens by reason of the development that it brought people from several nations and it increased the economic stance of those nations and yet the revivals still failed the bible and history is full of gifted men and women who cheaply aborted the moves of god in their generation so it will take more than skill and talent the bible and history again is full of very influential people the bible is full of people who had the eloquence of speech and my goodness modern history has revealed people you need to read the writings of some of these men like charles g finney e.m bounds their intelligence and their mental construct alone is, is a lecture for you aside from their spirituality the depth of their understanding and the way they approach life was already superior by default and yet some of these revivals failed now please hear me this is what the Lord told me the greatest tool for the revival that is coming and the greatest weapon for the revival that is coming will be a life that reflects the character of the Christ in thoughts in words in lifestyle end of discussion isn't it amazing that beyond anointing beyond skill beyond financial prosperity the Lord is saying that the greatest tool, the greatest prerequisite, and the greatest enhancer of the revival that is coming is not any of the things aforementioned, but a life that reflects the character of Christ in thoughts, in words, and in lifestyle. We are talking here about a realm of intimacy with God becoming a friend of God you know we live in a world right now where we are so conscious of being men of God we are so conscious of being um MOG you know when you say apostle prophet it seems to carry some kind of status it can earn you access to the hearts of men you can be endeared to men based on whatever title that you carry but we are not talking about ministerial titles here this is more than becoming an apostle more than becoming a prophet more than becoming an evangelist listen carefully this realm i'm talking about is a realm beyond being prayerful this realm i'm talking about is a realm beyond knowing scriptures this realm i'm talking about is a realm beyond being anointed because for us in the body of Christ and sadly in this generation it looks like the apex of your spiritual pursuit is being anointed and don't get me wrong the anointing is important I have taught you extensively but the days that are coming will need more than being an anointed person the devil has fooled many people into believing that the zenith of your spiritual pursuit as you strive to be a man or a woman of stature is to get to a point where you become anointed so we gauge our spiritual work when you pray when you fast you check your level of anointing once it rises you say wow i've made progress i am telling you there are superior parameters for measuring power and strength in the spirit beyond anointing you would be mistaken to think Anna the prophetess was not anointed there's no mention of her healing the sick in fact the bible says of all the prophets that came before john he said john was the greatest show me how many people john raised from the dead show me how many miracles john did and yet this was a man who was filled with the holy ghost from his mother's womb hear me i wrote something down here the church needs to be drawn back to the most superior parameters 
for measuring intimacy and success with God we have used mundane and very inferior parameters that means if I ask you to arrange any two or three people based on their intimacy with God chances are excellent that you will use the parameter of anointing or maybe crowd in ministry for a man of God are we together or the extent of their knowledge of Bible or the extent of their dexterity as far as their commitment to prayer these things are wonderful but you will be mistaken in the midst of all of this you can still be deceived there are more superior spiritual parameters for measuring the depth of a man's intimacy and walk with God are we together now let me tell you the truth this, 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 these are my very deep contemplations. When it has to do with matters of death to the flesh, when it has to do with matters of death to the flesh, it has to do with matters of character and it has to do with matters of Christ-like manifestations. I wrote here, there are no champions there. Let me announce it up front. There may be champions in the area of prophecy you can find people who as soon as you look at them i once met a man of god years ago sincerely i'm not sure it is not even on tv i went for a retreat somewhere and i met that man have i ever seen a prophet like that this man would prophesy head to toe and say everything i have seen champions in the area of the prophetic History, both ancient and modern, is full of people who took this Bible and literally transported it into their heads. When you listen to some of our fathers of faith, it's as if there is another eye that was given to them that they can open. Even some of us who have touched a bit of this, we know the labor in the spirit that brought this dimension of spiritual acumen. And yet you will hear the fathers talk about scripture. There are champions in the areas of scripture and revelation there are champions in the area of church growth there are people who you can take them to the village they will bring every other village to that place there is there are champions there but when it has to do with the matters of death to the flesh when it has to do with the matters of character when it has to do with the matters of christ-like manifestations i repeat there are no champions is someone learning now Philippians chapter 3 let's read from verse 12 to 15 Apostle Paul the, the, the deep revelator or revealer of scripture Apostle Paul the writer of two-thirds of the New Testament not as though I had already attained Paul is not afraid of saying this now you have to understand that he's speaking to the people he's mentoring how many people have the sincerity and the unashamedness to stand before your mentees and admit that as much as they admire you as much as they desire to be like you you yourself have not yet attained there are higher and deeper levels in the spirit we live in a world where our pride, especially as men of God, is derived around the, the extent of our superstitiousness, if I will use that expression, and our, that, that kind of godlike mysticism. Here is an apostle who is saying there's no need to hide it. I have not already attained. Either we're already perfect, the word there is matured, but I follow after even while mentoring you i follow after even while imparting gifts upon you to be established i follow after in other words i am a student myself just privileged to be in a higher class in the spirit if i may apprehend that for which also i am apprehended by jesus christ reading to 15 Give us verse 13. Brethren, he says, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth for those things which are before. He says, I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling, high calling of God in Christ Jesus. 
it says let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded that means carry a mentality that never allows you arrive that you know that no matter what kind of exploits you are doing in the spirit no matter the level of the anointing no matter the level of achievement in the spirit that you know that there are still deeper and higher realms and dimensions in the spirit if you're with me say amen, amen. now the Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the state of man man as God's creation with respect to the subject please look up with respect to the subject of sin and the flesh I have taught you here that there are two things that man has to deal with number one is sin for an unbeliever but for a believer even though you have been washed by the blood of the lamb the Bible talks about the flesh with one confession you are free from sin but it is not one confession that frees you from flesh many believers do not understand these dynamics that you have to be free from the grip of these two things to be able to ascend the mount of God and do mighty things with God being free from sin as wonderful as it is is the entrance into the kingdom but there is another major limitation are we together and that when it has to do with the limitation of the flesh it has nothing to do with being good or bad it is a limitation that is enshrined in all men please I want you to listen to me let it be from the depth of your heart before you become a casualty to yourself one of the biggest problems that has affected the revivals years ago I preached a message why revivals die it was a product of a research that I had I had to study the moves of God and why many of them died and I found out there was only one reason why revivals die the humanity of men not lack of prayer not lack of fasting no not lack of Bible study not even lack of going to church the fact that the careers and the ones who work in partnership with the Holy Spirit to sponsor this revival are men listen when you press to know God the next project in your spiritual adventure is to know yourself if you do not pay the price to understand yourself as man I give you a guarantee you may not arrive you see history the bible and history is full of many great people some who crashed did not finish their project some of them were voices that were motivations to their generation and sadly towards the end of their lives something just happened that just eroded their testimony of many decades and let me tell you the truth I have studied people who have risen and stood and finished to the end. I have studied people who did not even start. I have studied people who started and did well and fell. First for my own life and then to be able to unravel this cancer of not finishing strong in the body. Are we together? I can tell you 95% of the people who have fallen in history and in the Bible are a lot more upright and sincere than many people in our generation yet they did not stand that means we have to learn there is something we need to understand about man there is a lot of blind bold face and arrogance that people are communicating in the body of Christ there are there have been sincere people who carry this baton of the faith with integrity and truth and even with that some of them did not finish strong it therefore is a challenge for us to understand what does it take to stand and survive being a light even to the end you may examine many principles you may say they were not anointed and demons came and destroyed them or they were not they didn't understand this those were they can be very valid reasons but one of the greatest reasons is that they do not understand the construct of the fallen man. You see, when you understand yourself 
in light of the limitation that is upon all men it will put pressure on you to need God as a matter of life and death your need for God will be artificial until and unless it is derived from this revelation of how incapacitated you are out of the assistance of God when it has to do with the issue of the flesh there is no man who sustains by default indefinitely the capacity to survive the varieties of of the what do they call it now the the various chains that the flesh can bring upon an individual please listen very carefully for someone tonight's message will be a lifeline is what you will hold on to that at the end of your life you will stand with strength and with grace when Dr. Panam was speaking about this, our dear ones here, and was praying for them, you know what was in my mind? I'm very philosophical in my thinking. I was not even really focusing on the people and him. Number one, I was looking at the age difference. And then number two, I was asking, what did he know? And what did he find that kept him there? Because my goodness, this world, we have seen skilled musicians that did not last six months. Like Orange, they came out with fire and that's it. This race requires a skill. Have you seen people run 100 meters and others don't even know how to stand well. From the first step, they are gone. Others will run to the end. Others in running, they, they've not taken time to master this thing. The flesh is a subject that has been approached from two standpoints. Number one, from a standpoint of avoidance. People refuse to talk about it simply because of the embarrassing situations that are wrapped around the subject of the flesh. When you are dealing with the matters of the flesh, it comes with a lot of embarrassment because it seems to expose man's limitation at its highest. So most people prefer to throw it away and not talk about it. And sadly, some of the teachings that float around the body of Christ today use all kinds of things to just cover it and push it away. Whereas people are dying and they need help and need it fast. Number two, those who approach it from a standpoint that is not scriptural and all that happens is unraveling the depth of darkness that is shrouded in flesh without proffering a scriptural pathway that leads to victory. Are you seeing the problem now? So there are people who approach the subject of flesh by avoiding it. So we have all kinds of things that are as a result of the flesh with no strategy for victory whatsoever. And for others, they only end up feeling condemned because they now come into the awareness of the, 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 the supposed strength of the flesh on them. And then they begin to ask, can I really survive? Will I really survive? Tonight is a word of hope. Let me show you two scriptures that define the state of a man. Every man, including the person preaching to you, listen carefully. This is liberty coming. Psalms 51. We've read that scripture before, but now you pay attention. Please give it to us, media. Let's hurry up. I told you it's a charge. I hope and pray that it remains a charge. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions too. It says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. I've told you that iniquity is not sin. There is a difference between sin and iniquity. Iniquity is a perpetual, continual, willful state of rebellion against God and his principles. And cleanse me from my sin. Are you seeing the difference there? For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Verse 4. It says, against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil thing in thy sight. I hope you know this was the Psalm of David. Are we together now? When prophet Nathan came to him over Bathsheba and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Verse 5. 
Behold, now this is a very powerful information. I was shapen in iniquity. That means when my father met with my mother, what happened there was not just biology. There was the DNA of sin that followed. Already, as that baby was growing, he was growing with the possibilities for every kind of sin. Please listen, you have to get this. Most people think the things that destroy them are land. It's not true. The things that destroy are not land. They are activated. It is resident within man. You need to listen so that you will understand the pathway that has been created. I was shaping in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Next verse. Thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts. Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Uh-huh. Let's hurry up media. Purge me with high soap and I shall be clean. The psalmist is praying. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. I wonder what that looks like. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Verse 10. It says create in me. This is the scripture. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart. So what is the name of the one you have first? Create in me a clean heart, not a heart. I'm not praying for a heart. I am praying for a clean heart. Oh God, and renew a right spirit. He uses the word clean. He uses the word right. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Three more verses. Cast me not away from your presence. I will explain to you the meaning of this. Because this statement right here is how the clean heart will be created. Are you following now? The possibility of having a clean heart created depends on your encounter and your intimacy. He says, do not rob me of the privilege of having access to your presence. Remember, Moses prayed this same prayer. Don't let your presence go away from us. Moses was the meekest man. This one was a man after God's heart. Two of them, it was presence dependent. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of salvation and uphold me with the free spirit. 13. It says, then, then, only when I have gone through this, I will be able to teach transgressors your ways. Because he's saying, I'm not the only one with this tendency. So let me make myself the guinea pig to pass through this and explore in the spirit and know what it takes to command victory. As a result of my own victory, I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Is someone learning? First John chapter 1 from verse 8 to 10. Apostle John is speaking still about the state of man. He said, if we say we have no sin. He didn't say, if I say I have no sin. He said, we, everybody listening and everybody who will read. If we say we have no sin, he said, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Nine. But if we confess our sins, he says, he, God now, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse 10. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. If someone is following, say amen. amen. These two scriptures in without any sense of ambiguity they describe for you the tendency of every man regardless the effort you make in yourself and by your strength to remedy that situation in iniquity did my mother conceive me there are many people who carry children as babies begin to grow in holy families that love the lord a baby is growing and you look at him and say baby how are you he slaps you with his hand and while you cry he's laughing in iniquity did my mother conceive me 
this is a baby that has not done anything. He will wind his tiny hand and give you a slap and you pretend like you are crying and the baby is laughing. Then he slaps you again. Where did that possibility come from? It was not outsourced. It was activated. Now, let me tell you how sin and the flesh works. It doesn't come from outside. It is within, but it needs an external activation system. And it can wait patiently for many decades. So, you can be deceived to think because it has not manifested, it is not in you. Are we together? The Bible here tells us to not wait until the things that can activate what is locked up within us come because it may come at a time when your reputation is at stake it may come at a time when you are 30 years 50 years in ministry it may come at a time where you have two more years to finish with dignity and then something just comes and cancels out all the years let me tell you the truth when you understand what I'm teaching you, you will know that everyone that God is using, you owe them your prayer and your intercession. That prayer that God will keep and preserve people to the end is better than buying a car and giving someone. Is someone learning? Watch this now. So the Bible talks about the state of man. The next thing we should look at is God's standard. There is a standard for intimacy and friendship with God. Now, this is the challenge sometimes, respectfully speaking, with some of the gospels that we receive in the body of Christ that makes you just believe that friendship and intimacy with God has no conditions. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but let me tell you sincerely, not everyone can become the friend of God and not everyone can access that realm, can ascend to that realm of depth and intimacy with God except and unless you fulfill the conditions regardless what time we are living in whether it's 21st century 20th century whatever century we are living in the standards of god as far as friendship and intimacy is concerned will never change what are his standards psalm 24 verse 3 and 4. psalm 24 verse 3 and 4 gives us the standard of God as far as friendship with God and intimacy with God is concerned. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? The answer, next verse. He that has clean hands, a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. That's the condition the Bible gives. Ephesians chapter 4, let's read from verse 17. If God is speaking to you, say amen. amen. Pay attention now. Let's read. It says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Keep reading. Verse, next verse. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness, to walk all on cleanness with greediness. 20. But ye have not so learned Christ. Uh-huh. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Keep reading. That ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man. Watch the things he says to put off now. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Uh -huh. And be ye renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which is after God recreated in righteousness and true holiness. 25. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Paul had to find a way of saying, how do I say this now? Will I really say don't be angry? 
many times was Paul angry himself? You will see it in his epistles. He said, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. 27. Neither give place to the devil. Next verse. Reading to 32. Let him that stole. Before you say steal no more, there must be him that stole. Rather let him labor working with his hands the thing that is good that he may give to him that needed. 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Next verse. It says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Two more verses. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you and all malice 32 it says and be ye kind one to another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as god for christ's sake has forgiven you now look up please let me tell you something that um i have i have observed sadly with the body of christ it looks like for you to gain respect and to be looked at as a man of integrity you have to be a preacher of righteousness and to deal with all of these things but the the trouble here is that most times in discussing the subject of the flesh what we men of God do and that extends to fathers in their families leaders generally is that we line up all the attributes of the flesh and find the ones that we are guilty of then we exempt them in our discussion so if i have a problem I, I, are we together now yes if you have a problem with stealing and money and you have collected money from politicians when i'm hammering on the issue of flesh i will nicely dodge away the issue of corruption and lash out on things like immorality and the rest and say be a person of character when you are training people to be men and women who die to the flesh there has to be a holistic capture of everything that needs to fall off until people become people of spiritual stature are we together now very important it's a mistake that we make and it's not because we are bad it's just that sometimes we are weak as men so when you have an issue maybe issue of morality and whatever when you are dealing with issues of flesh you will hit issues of pride issues of bribery and just brush away the weightier matters that is how many people have been addressing the issue of the flesh that is why believers have not been empowered to deal with it watch this many of you here are virologists microbiologists how do you deal when they say a virus or a disease is out what do you do you don't run away from it the first thing you do medical science teaches us that you isolate that uh, whatever it is am i right on that and you begin to study its operation you now study if this is a virus how does it work in the human body now you begin to learn how it works and sometimes you can now use several parameters to come up with an antidote running away from the reality of that virus will not cure it when the pandemic came many people were as much as we we're having social distance there were people who were close to the covid themselves they had to be close to it to come up with a vaccine is someone learning now so just talking about the issues of the flesh and running away from it without examining the intrinsic nature of man and looking at a scriptural solution that provides victory we will only be we will only be programming casualties again and again and again the bible already comes to the conclusion to the hearing of all that man unassisted by god has tendencies you are not even aware of hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too 
tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.